Welcome back to another episode of the RAG Report podcast, my daily bulletin show where I bring to you recruitment owners, advisors, suppliers, even investors uh, around the world who are prepared to give up some of their time to share stories, expertise, news on what's going on right now as we live in the middle of this strange pandemic and how we're going to get out of it together. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Oliver and Sam, the founders of Morgan Latif, a specialist leadership and search consultancy. Uh, focused on the life sciences and industrial sectors. I've known these guys for about six months. I think we met at the beginning of 2020, before the world flipped upside down. Um, And uh, for such a young brand, these guys have got some real big big plans and and think very, uh, I think, very progressively in terms of the way that they're trying to set the organization up from the start. So I'm excited to dig into that, what made them do what they've done, where they're at, and how how COVID-19 has affected them. Before I do... A quick word from our sponsor, Rise Recruitment Ventures. Um, Rise are a recruitment agency investment business focused on helping both startups and early stage organizations scale and exit. So these guys built liquid personnel from 2006 and sold it in 2016 for over 20 million. The two of them have come back together to help the newest brands with both capital and expertise on how you can grow and exit. Um, They are looking for investments right now. So if you're listening to this show every day thinking, would it, would it be right for me? Then just reach out, get on the website, www.riserv.co.uk, and they'll set up a call and talk you through their process. Right, back to the show. Oli, Sam, welcome to the RAG Report. Thanks for having us. Hi, thanks a lot. It's, it's always, it's, it, it, having two on a, on a Zoom video slash yeah. recording is never as natural as it is in a room. So yeah. um, for, uh, f- for the sake of this, I'll, I'll try and direct conversation and questions at you. Um, but in true RAG Report style, I always like to start with a question of what the hell is your life like right now? And I'm going to point that at you, Sam, first. T- paint a picture. Where, where are you? What's going on in your life right now? Well, we're at, I'm at home. So it's, it's been, I think like everybody, a bit of a, bit of a journey. Um, learned a lot as well. Um, developed a podcast ourselves as well. So I yeah. think that's been one, uh, one of the good things, one of the good innovations. But like most people just adapting to working from home. Um, I think we were quite nimble anyway before. So we've sort of adapted to the situation as best we can. I think because of the, the flexibility we have in terms of our industries, we sort of remain quite robust in one areas versus the other. So as I said, it's been uh, a lot of uh, an interesting journey for all of us and good learnings. So, so yeah, I think luckily now we're still starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, we'll see how things go from now on. Things are changing. Right, Ollie, how do you guys live close together? Do you see each other? How are you managing it at the moment? At the moment, um, we've actually just started seeing each other for tennis, so having a, uh, um, the first kind of face-to-face meetings, uh, which has been, been really good, apart from Sam being better at tennis than me. Well, but, you did um, win the Friday night poker game you shared on off-air, so uh, yeah, getting you come up. It, exactly. It was payback. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we've we've been we've been having daily catch ups on video um, at least once a day, uh, just to kind of make sure that we're um, still setting our targets and uh, um, having a, a catch up basically. Um, but I mean, the, the main difference for us is we were taken in in turns to go between our houses and um, an office. Um, Sam lives in Wynwood and I live in Balham, so it's only um, and half an hour run or something. But uh, um, I've been spending that time with my wife now, unfortunately, instead of Sam, which has been uh, um, much more pleasurable in case she's listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? I thank God my wife doesn't listen to this show because I've mentioned her on about 50 episodes and I've said all sorts and she hasn't listened to a single one of them. She's always like, you, you, you tune in yet? She's, oh, yeah, everything's really good. I'm like, yeah, whatever. If you did, <laughs> I'd have a slap. Um, but... Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, I'm, I'm, I had a call with a client this morning, or a potential client, and the, the owner and the CEO, um, they're obviously not the same person, both in the same room, and he's like, yeah, we've been working in socially distanced for a while. I think one of them had a thermometer machine that he checks the temperature with, which I thought was incredible. Um, but it is, it's just weird. It's just so weird. But you guys, obviously, when I, I, when I met you, I was like, they're, they're like the perfect startup story. You know, two guys, really strong billers, making money, living that kind of what you imagine the startup recruitment agency dream to be. Um, and again, can you just, can one of you, uh, in fact, Ollie this time, can you tell us a little brief intro as to what Morgan Latif's all about and what, when you started, et cetera? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, the backstory is that Sam and I worked together um, in our old search firm for uh, about eight years. So uh, we'd known each other extremely well. And then um, it just so happened we were actually um, looking at leaving and going doing something new uh, July last year. And we had some get on very well and uh, complement each other uh, pretty well, actually. Um, and it just turned out that we had the same vision and um, wanted to really create something ourselves that was uh, um, that we could own and, and be proud of basically so we did that we left in July started in August and uh, we spent the whole of August putting together everything I and mean, you don't realize when you when you set up just if you start from nothing everything from researching the best phone system CRM um, all the way through to creating the content for the website I mean it took us uh, like 14 and 16 hour days occasionally you know, right, um, let's, stop there then. Let's, let's go through that because that is probably one of the most widely um received questions that i get off people that are potentially going to start like what do i need to think about so you mentioned crm you mentioned uh, phone systems what else like if we just go through a list of things what, what do they need to consider uh, it was uh, abs- i mean the list was was huge we were thinking then um insurance companies so uh, which insurance company do we go for banks um we do a lot of work in europe so then we had to do the research to find out which bank had the best fees um and then we've ended up having two banks um one for european transactions and one for british transactions so um and then outside of that it is the website content it is the booklets and brochures um, everything down to your tone of voice and the brand, which um, ultimately then you guys came in to help us with. Um, Sam, can you think of anything else that we, well, we I think researched? We had like a good process that we wanted to always have like three suppliers for, for one of those. So it gave us like a good sort of learning experience from all those kind of discussions we were having on what would be the best, what would add the most value to the business. And, and through that, we had like a really clear process. So. Um, for all of the things that, you know, when you set up a business, like all you said around the marketing, the finance, the, the CRM, the system set up, I mean, all those things, we just made a list, spoke to the right suppliers. And then from there, we were able to get good decisions. And then from that, really understand how, how to then make the best decision to add value to the company. Did you both do everything together or did you divide and conquer a little bit? We had a big spreadsheet, didn't we? And then uh, we'd assign a task and put a due date um, and then have a color code. So it was like a, like a project management spreadsheet, uh, which we still actually do look back on it. And we ended up taking some photos and uh, tried to make the experience. It was really good fun, actually. We had a, um, quite a few barbecues when we were at mine. And, uh, you, um, you lean towards that more. I, get the, I can't work you two out as to which one's the more process-driven one. Is the one obviously does more of that? uh i'd probably say all is a bit more process driven now like i think there's some things i think that's what was good when we started working together because we knew each other so well from before we kind of knew our strengths and weaknesses so we knew certain tasks were better for one person than it was for the other so it was just kind of a natural thing to make that decision on okay you handle this because you're better suited versus the other person so i think that was also something that was quite natural for us and it was, it was quite easy for us as well to be honest yeah that, um I'd say when me and Amma started Hoxo, that was not as natural. Like we, we were quite. We both, you guys knew each other for a long time as well. Yeah, you? like well, first day of uni in 24, 2004. Oh, really? And we worked together for the last three years at Hoxo. We worked together in all sorts of stuff. So we knew each other really well. We'd never worked in the same team though. I'd never actually like directly done the job together. We'd been in the same company, but we'd never worked side by side. But when you not only were we starting our own business, but we were doing it in an industry we'd never worked. <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, who does what? And I remember we, we tried to do everything together and it just became like too long winded and slow. And um, I think uh, that is the one bit of advice I'd give any new founding partnership is split your roles quite early on, even though you might both be doing recruitment. Like, yeah, if one's a bit more operational and one's more say brand or whatever, then split them up. Um, so how long, how long did all that, like the logistical crap take you guys to get done? A month yeah i mean it's actually ongoing because as you grow and develop you then have a, a bit more time and money to invest in other things um and uh so i think but i think the first month basically was was just setting up and then we officially started launching the business at the uh um, beginning of uh september what was that like can you remember those first few days what was the feeling like yeah it was super exciting and um, we were 
obviously launched the website and uh, had some really amazing feedback from our contacts actually which is some of the, the most rewarding bit of it is just um, so many people reaching out with, with kind words and LinkedIn's great for that it's also pretty nervous like you put yourself out there for the first time and you feel quite quite exposed so it's a I'd say a huge mixture of feelings for me what about you Sam? Yeah I mean it, for me as well you know it's just you're going into the unknown and it's our names on, on like the, the, the company, which, you know, I think some people go that direction, some people don't. But, um, but like Ollie said, I mean, it's, it's kind of the, 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 good, the good type of like nervousness and excitement, you know, like you're looking forward to see, even though you don't know the future, you're kind of thinking, oh, what's, gonna, what's it going to be like a year from now? What's the results? Who our first client's going to be? Because also we had a, a pretty strict non, uh, non-compete enforced on us and we wanted it kind of to be, yeah maybe play by the, the rules around that. And, um, and I think that really made it a, a good challenge for us. And, and at the end of the day, we really enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's tough for anyway. You guys went, didn't you go straight for a new sector? You went life science, life science wasn't a market you knew, right? Not very well, no. So we've done a little bit of um, life sciences, like pharmaceutical, medical technology in our old company, but it was never a real focus. But um, actually the, it's worked out really well because the industry is just incredible and uh, some of the companies you end up working with and the, the products and the technology from um, helping people to hear that have never heard before or uh, I mean there's, there's loads of examples but uh, it, it's just an incredible sector as well. Did you both just hit the BD hard at the beginning then was it was it all or did you go down the candidate route what was your initial going into a new market no data what was the initial focus? It was BD really uh, because I think in the in in the segments we're in and the levels we recruit at, it's it's really more, it's really more about winning search projects. It's not really candidate driven, yeah. um. So it's low volume, but the higher fees. So we just had to branch out throughout our network and um and yeah, just obviously be be on the phone, obviously be be connecting with the right people. We we obviously made a point to go to Germany a lot, which is where the majority of our our segments are focused. So we just really gave ourselves these kind of real key milestones to sort of be out meeting people and networking yeah. with the right people and speaking to the right people because I said like, yeah, our, our, it's more low volume, but it's more about winning business where in our, in our segments for sure. So is everything you guys do retained? A large percentage of it. Um, in, in, and actually that, that is getting higher as we get older. So we do, um, there's one service we have, which is more of a confidential introduction, which is, is basically just specking a, a hot candidate in once you've got their permission. Um, so some of our business has, has come from that, but then the objective is to then uh, convert that relationship into a search one. Yeah. Um, but the big thing for us is meeting people because once they've met you, they trust you, they know you. Um, and there's a huge conversion from meeting customers to, to winning projects. So that's right. probably yeah, the, the let's biggest let's thing for us. Let's forward then and take it to now. We're, we're going to kind of go a bit all over the show, but you can't meet anyone right now. So how has this current <laughs> climate affected what you guys are so good at? Well, like, I mean, there's nothing really we can do, right? Because, um, yeah, I mean, what we do is we just try to speak to more people, right? I think right now we have really good foundations with also senior level candidates. And I think it's just maintaining that contact until we do get that chance to go meet them. That's the only thing really you can do. Um, and make sure for the clients that we have one to make sure that they're happy that we're delivering on all the promises that we said we were, regardless of what's going on um, in the outside world. So it's just maintaining that key contact and then hopefully planning for the future so that when we do get a chance to go out again, we, we have meetings lined up. We know exactly what we want from those meetings, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's just planning around that and keeping in contact with the right people in our network around that. Can you build some of these relationships via video? Holly? I think so. Yes, definitely. I mean, I mean, you've seen it yourself. There's a massive difference between, I mean, we were video interviewing candidates even before Corona. Yeah. So I think there's a massive difference between like just being on the phone and just seeing somebody face to face. It's, I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's completely different. So I think you definitely can, but, and I think everybody's in the same situation. So everybody's kind of adjusted to that as well. Yeah. yeah. I think video is hugely important. We, we, we won't send a CV or a candidate to a client without having video interviewed them now because it's so easy and that you don't, there's so many different platforms that it's, there's no, no reason not to. Um, and, and yeah, definitely had uh, like new client meetings over video where we've uh, we've got to know them and that the quality is so good now so it's it's not ideal um but it it definitely is is super valuable i'm interrupting this episode to bring to your attention our second sponsor that's odro 
Audra is calling on the recruitment industry in, in absence of organized events to take part in what's called the Active Recruiter Challenge. The idea is that we'll all get together on the same day, Friday the 10th of July, to run either a 10K or a half marathon. Um, this is a combined effort from all recruiters to run from their homes and follow any route you want up and down the country. We're hoping that together we can raise money for a teenage cancer trust. Um, and in order to do so, we want all runners to contribute £25 in sponsorship. Fitness and charity, what a combination. To get involved, sign up to the Active Recruiters Club on Strava, then join the 10K or the half marathon from there. Strava will then track our time so that we can use them and find out how we are competing with our friends and colleagues. There's also a runner's pack with numbers and wristbands which will be sent out from Audro once you get involved. Finally, see Audro's Active Recruiters blog for full details. Everything will be shared in a link to this podcast so do you see moving forward then that the, the business travel to germany and places like that would will you try and bring that back or would you be a bit more i suppose scarce with it now knowing that you don't necessarily need it i think that there's although it's it, it's, it's an interesting one isn't it i think um especially when you're meeting people for the first time um i think there's a huge value in, in that in terms of how well they um, are responsive they know you they, if, once you've met somebody I think there's a, it's a, it is a different relationship I don't think that can ever fully be replicated um, by video although I do think that once you have met somebody a few times the need to actually meet them in person could be replaced by a video so I think there's probably a, a small difference there yeah yeah so what let's just get to the point before COVID so where was your business in early 2020 so when we're looking at like april Mar uh, february and march before it all took off how would you describe where you were at that point well i think um we were doing really well actually we're i mean we're really above our, our financial projections we were we had a good number of uh, clients both by that time also our non-compete had expired so we were also starting to sort of have conversations with our old existing clients so we were really ahead of plan um, and to be fair, when it hit, it, it really didn't really impact us that well because we'd done quite a lot of good work in January and February that only now we're really starting to feel a little bit. But um, we were in a good situation where we were obviously, act, we're, we're basically, we were doing well against our projections. We were planning to hire, um, like the number of clients we won were, were consistent, we were getting repeat business and um, we were in a good spot and then obviously it hit and, and there was obviously a lot of changes and we've had to said pivot a little bit and focus a little bit more on just making sure that it's us to continue to deliver for the clients we've won but now i think i said with that light at the end of the tunnel we can sort of restart a few of those kind of plans that we had um when when it hit what you see yeah, we basically had two or three months where um what was it, it was march april may yeah and uh it uh, we, we feel like we've kind of lost those months in a lot of projects were put on hold that's now starting to reverse where um the tide's definitely changing again so um we're, we're back growing again back to where we were in, in march but um that's yeah good. march well, april may was tough so what, what's this, the main difference is what clients are just are they are they offer, coming out with new opportunity or they're just restarting things that you'd already began both both so um e even just this last friday we've had one client where we've got several projects and they're starting to release the projects gradually and the green light came for this um it's a regional leader role um on friday and just had a, had a call again this morning so um and that was on hold for um two and a half months so it's just i guess there's the a lot of these um in the life science industry like even if it's medical technology um the the non-elective surgeries are changing so basically coronavirus surgeries at one stage were based were such a high percentage of all the surgeries now as that's improving and people are going back for different procedures then the demand's increasing again so um the market's definitely definitely getting a bit more confident and that was one of like the blessings in the skies of actually going into life sciences is we knew it was a growing market and we knew it was a bit more robust in industrials so actually when we started up the business even though we said we were you know, going into a new market and obviously we'd have to ramp up quickly. Um, we just sort of said like that eventually we'll pay dividends because we're, we're diversifying our, our client market a bit more. And, and again, that's helped us really weather the storm 
in these last few months as well. Have you, um, have you, so let's talk about the podcast, Sam, because you, we had a yeah. good chat, obviously we've helped you with it. I know you've been working yeah. with some other partners as well on parts of it, but what made you guys think about launching a, a podcast? What was the initial plan around that? Where did it come from? I'll, I'll give you a, a little plug for Hoxo there. But it was, <laughs> so that it was, was purely our idea was it or was it well, it was it was definitely i think when we were discussing i mean as i said we we had a, this thought that we wanted to outsource um not only our finance but our marketing and that's why we met you guys and i think you guys gave us some good ideas and um that's really where it was planned to like we knew that there were some things being done with podcasts we, we had a again a good contact in our last company that was doing them but to use them professionally we never thought about it mm. um and then it would hit i think when we when we were really, we really wanted to be thought leaders in our, in our segment. I think that's what really helped us differentiate ourselves. So we just thought that was a great way to do it. Right. So, um, the, we had an original idea to incorporate coaches into our searches and with the coaches, we wanted to be able to give them a platform because then we can both benefit. If I interview somebody, you, you're going to use our network for this and then we're going to use your network. Right. So it's, it's a win-win and that's how it came about. And then we just started having these conversations and, and then, yeah, it just, it just got to the point where it made sense to do it, invest a bit of money in it, and, and it's worked out well so far. So how, you, where, how far are you on with the, with the show? So we're, we've now in the third episode, but we got 10 confirmed episodes. So, and I think the caliber of guests you can get once you start doing it is, is a lot better, you know? So once they see that you're like a proper podcast, you put it out and stuff like that, you're on YouTube, all those kind of things sort of you know, come together. So, um, yeah, we're going to do a series of 10, and I think because the response has been good, we're probably then going to develop a different type of one. I think Ollie wants a bit of the limelight as well, so we'll probably probably do that as well. Yeah, that is always a question mark, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> season two is just going to be. Uh, it's always difficult with the second season of anything. Well, so, uh, well they, they, I mean, I, what am I? This is technically season three of my show, and I, I, there's a couple of reasons I love podcasting two one it's like a meeting right so like you get time with people i've learned so much from people like yourself over the last couple of years and um but the the, the other beauty of it is just the sheer like opportunity that comes from the content so like you know this chat we have for 45 minutes yeah, yeah. can be sliced and diced into a hundred pieces of content we could write a report on it we could do social posts we can do miniature clips uh, there's just so much you can take from it and it, and it's evergreen you can always read i put up um i did a post two weeks ago of, of, of a podcast that I did a year ago i just it, it flashed up on um i was looking at my phone for something and it, i don't know if you go on your iphone and you click years it automatically takes you to the 12 months ago to the day and it yeah. took me to the day i was recording that show with uh, with tony kikosa and i was like to me that was like the absolute episode that segmented how much i love this show um so I posted it again and it got like, I think I got 30,000 views on the post. I got hundred messages, the, the spike on the shows, listeners went yeah. up. And that, all I did was repost a video we made a year ago. It's yeah. not going anywhere, right? Um, yeah. And that asset and being able to invite people on the show is just a much better version of business development. It's just, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To get people onto it. So well done for taking the, 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 even if it was partly our idea, you've still got to go and do it, right? Um, and uh, I think when, when you guys came to me in January, you said, you know, we want to build our brand on marketing. And, and you were six months in at that point. You, that is so rare. What, talk us through the mindset as to why you two were even thinking like that at, at six months in when you could have just been, you know, smashing in deals and, and nothing else. So I think for me, I've been listening to your podcast for about a year or so um, before even leaving and, and setting up Morgan Latif. So um, I know that there had been some of the co the, the, the topics you, you discussed there and uh, I'd researched and found out about Hoxo Media because of that. Um, I also felt like I knew you before meeting you, which is quite a strange sensation. Wow. But um, and, and the other thing is, so um, you look at what's going on with like Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, um, the these kind of inbound marketing, and um, for us, it's it's really important. Like Sam said, want to be a, a thought partner for our customers, um, but also we learn massively from it, and it's an, it's a huge opportunity for us to have these conversations with experts in their field. Um, and it just makes everything we do so much better. We can interview candidates better. We can um, understand our clients' needs better. 
Um, our brand has more equity in the market um, because we were associated with these people. It was, for us, it's just a, a, a no-brainer. Um, and it was just about as we, we would wanted to do it as quickly as it was possible. Um, and we've just not looked back. And it's super exciting. We love it. I love that. I love that. Because that is the, probably the, 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 I think personally for me, COVID-19 has fast forwarded like I reckon a few more years of people thinking, I'm not sure it's required. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you've, you've both seen it, haven't you? Like LinkedIn has gone nuts. Like people are yeah, yeah, all over yeah. it. And it, it's crazy. I've, I've had new competitors popping up in my space. I'm getting more messages than ever. Not necessarily everyone wanting to spend any money, but people yeah, are definitely. realizing, because if, you know, it, the, the one thing I would say is it shouldn't take you away from still doing the recruitment job. It should enhance the recruitment job. People get so scared about the fact that, oh, I can't be doing marketing all day. Like if you do one recording a week and you slice that into five pieces of content per week, you strip the audio, you put it on a podcast, you put the video on a YouTube clip, you put that on your website, straight away there, you've got more content going out a week than probably any of your competition. And it t- technically, you know, if you outsource the, 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 the stuff you don't do, it's about an hour's work. It's crazy. Um, yeah. what, uh, what have you learned the most in year one? What, you, you're almost there next month. What, what would you say biggest learning about yourselves? What have you learned the most? Question. I, I think, I mean, the first thing is you, you just cannot prepare for, for some things. I mean, no one expected coronavirus. So I just, I just think um, that the biggest learning in general for us is just be prepared for anything to happen. Because for us, it's been slow start, amazing period coronavirus now building back up again uh, which is the classic ro- uh, roller coaster of recruitment anyway but uh, you just um you you just know, never know what's going to happen so i think that's probably the uh, um and just don't let anything phase you just stay stay positive to be honest because um when you're in this situation setting up it it, there's no manager or boss or anybody telling you to, what to do. It, it's you have to hold yourself accountable. So I think that's the um, you, your driving performance, and uh, um, that's probably the, the biggest thing. But you, Sam? Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think also it's like if I look back to that first period, it's that kind of stay hungry. You know, like once you do reach those first milestones, it's maybe not. E- I'm not saying you. You obviously. Um, become a little bit more complacent but I think again it's like it's I even put it back to my consultant days when you have a couple good months and then you kind of you know not necessarily relax but um it's having that consistency which is just the absolute difference is is knowing that you can control some situations and you got to do the same things regardless things are great or not so um that's been the the biggest learning and I think always try to innovate you know like just because something is is bad or, or other people are being affected uh, in the market, you have to find ways to innovate, to pivot and, and make sure you do it quickly and respond quickly so that, you know, you, you can really still be ahead of the curve. A message from our final sponsor, Vincere. Vincere, if you don't know, is the all-in-one CRM ATS platform for recruitment and staffing businesses globally. Now, I first heard about Vincere, it feels like a while, it was about a year or so ago. And this business came out of nowhere from speaking to recruitment agencies and, and I've always asked them what CRM they use when I when dealing with them from a Hoxo perspective the same players usually used to come up but this word Vincere kept coming up and I was like okay I've heard this two three four five times it must it must be uh, must be an interesting brand um, and now I hear Vincere almost as much as any other brand out there so I did my research and what I love about Vincere is they're looking to partner and invest in the same types of organizations that Hoxo do, which is the future high growth recruitment business, what I call progressive owners. Um, These guys are putting a product out there to level the playing field and help smaller businesses and those growing to edge over their competition. Um, It's it's proven to be a disruptor in the space. Um, More and more people are using this, this software globally. They recently broke into the G2 crowd's momentum grid as the market leader on stellar reviews from users. So the, the, the recruiters that are using Vincere are raving about it. They've got five global offices headquartered in Vietnam. So they, if you've got uh, an office anywhere in the world, they've got this follow the sun methodology. So the support is absolutely top notch. Um, and also by sponsoring the RAG, they're giving a unique offer to our listeners. So if you're listening 
um, and you want to get involved, go to Vincere's, V-I-N-C-E-R-E dot I-O forward slash rag, where they're going to be offering you a unique exclusive deal because you listen to the rag podcast. Get in touch today. And did you, did you guys have any, any office space at all? Were you renting any kind of co-working type op- options? Yeah, we've got a serviced office in um, central London, which we were going back and forth from. So you get a certain number of days and uh, we were, that was kind of our first step into to having an office. So you, if you kept that going or what's the plan moving forward now? It's not open at the moment because of the uh, COVID-19 situation, but they're, they're building up a, a credit. So we definitely will keep it going. And um, it it's like anything, we'd, we'd actually um, just, we were about to start hiring and building the business when the coronavirus situation struck. So um, we're now a few months behind plans, but uh, as, as, if the right person came um, in front of us today, we would absolutely have that conversation with them. And uh, we're not going to proactively start doing that until the end of the year, but um, that was as soon as we can go back into the office, we will. And what's the, what's the long-term vision then? How, how, how do you see the operation going and has COVID-19 affected that? That's a really good question, and and it, it's especially if we're the first two people, and the third, fourth, fifth hires uh, typically end up being part of your leadership team in the future of the company. So, the first people we hire it cannot be um, underestimated how important that is. Secondly, they also then really define the culture. So, um, although Sam and I have a really fixed idea about um the we uh, the, the the quality of, of the business and the, and the people um everyone's got this unique character and it's going to be really interesting if we do end up having some part work flexible working agreement and um, we're already looking at things like unlimited holiday and flexible working before coronavirus came up um but then the big topic is how do you define and create and keep a company culture in uh, in that kind of situation so it's it's uh it's going to be a big challenge i think yeah, and I think one of the things that was interesting, you asked us why we, we wanted to do the marketing when we were only six months in. And part of that was that I think we, we really kind of were able to articulate our brand and as, as Oli said, also have a lot more equity in the brand so that you're able to attract much better people at the end of the day. And I think that was also a key thing for us. Like the first tires are so important. And if you have a brand that's kind of well-known and a little bit more established, that's going to attract better people as your first tires. And then the likelihood of our success is a lot higher because I mean, you'll know as, as well as we do that the first hires you make are so critical. And, and if you can hire the best people, that's going to make or break your business. Too. Yeah, sure. Are you going to go for experienced hires or trainers, trainees? I think the first, the first ones would be expi- experienced, I would say. Um, my, 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 I've got a bit of a, I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested to know what people think of that trainee model moving forward and whether it will evolve and shift because I, that, I do fear for young people in general after after COVID nineteen. I think the, you know the risk taking factor of juniors when we we could have a second or third or fourth wave. Are you really gonna? It's been looking at our sector. Are you gonna gamble on young people and juniors, or are you gonna try and have a little smaller, leaner, more qualified, experienced team? I mean, it's, it's yeah. an I mean, I think that I mean the recruitment industry as a whole. There's so many recruitment companies, right? Like. I think there was 8,000 that started off last year. So there's, I think there's always going to be opportunities for people that want to come into the industry. I think that's always going to be there. I think that's what, one of the great things about the industry is that it offers opportunity to anybody. Um, how much that's going to impact people that, young people that want to get into the industry nowadays, I don't know, but I would feel pretty confident in, in how the, the industry will rebound and people getting enough opportunities to come into the industry if they wanted to. Sure. I think it's also about so much of our job or recruitment is learn through experience, but also learn through just listening to other people. Yeah. And um, you get that in the office environment, especially because a lot of com- uh, companies have that younger model where they, they bring people in and it's uh, there's possibly a bit of a higher churn. But a lot of the learning comes from the shadowing and the coaching, and that's difficult to have remotely. So I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest challenges of um, if you do have a business model where you're hiring a larger volume of um, younger people is how I think like you said in general how are we training developing coaching people that are coming into the the, the market if if um, not everyone's in the office all the time now and, and do you always think you'll have a more of a flexible working environment where people can work wherever they want or is it going to be eventually a more of a fixed base in central London I think we'll have a hybrid 
like we've discussed this, have that there needs to be some structure, but also um, we want to have, hire people that have the flexibility to to get the results and get the job done, um, rather than us feeling like we're we're mothering them or or, or nannying them. So uh, for us, absolutely have a model where it's um, there's there's a huge amount of flexibility, but also some structure with it. What you Sam? Anything you want to add? No, I think, yeah, it was just that really. I think we've seen that we have to give people that flexibility. Um, but I think at the same time, a lot of people miss that camaraderie and, and kind of the, the interactions people have with their colleagues and their peers, especially recruiters, right? I think normally they're the very social creatures, like they, they like to interact. They like to obviously go for, you know, drinks or whatever, or just hang around with their colleagues. Um, and I think you, you see that a, a lot of the outpouring on LinkedIn is people obviously even though they, they like working from home, still having that, that, that environment where they come together, they share ideas, they, they, they challenge each other to perform as best as they can. So um, I think that that hybrid model is definitely the one we'll follow. I think variety is probably the thing that will, I think will come out of the majority here. Because yeah. we've lost it. We've gone from you know, most businesses forcing people five days to now everyone pretty much being forced to be at home five days. And that choice, that variety is the key. And, and getting that right is going to be really difficult, like really, really difficult. Um, knowing what days for people to be in, do you split the office up so you've got 50% in on certain days? Do you all go in on the same day? I, I, I don't know. I, I've got this vision, though, that I think if you're looking at a recruitment brand in the future, it's going to be, it's going to be built on really clever branding and automation and technology so people having a really clear personal brand understanding the universe online and this is at a desk level so like you've got 100 recruiters all 100 really as much as they're making sales calls and screening candidates should have a small personal brand strategy to be able to you know have a compound effect of that everyone just having a chipping away every day at social posts and social connections and thinking actively about how they're building their brand online collectively will have a huge impact on the brands it's the compound effect of, of, it, of it all happening um and that is that does play to people being in different locations you know and doing a hell of a lot more with a couple of hours content than they could do just smashing cold calls all day um, it's exciting um what so if you had to give one piece of advice now if we've got a couple of a couple of young guns a couple of young ollie and sam sat in their house they're they, they've they're not necessarily sure what the future looks like, but they're looking like they're going to create the next Morgan Latif. Hopefully not in the same market with the same client. Uh, enough of that. Don't do it. It's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, what, what is, you guys are really current. It's really fresh. You've been doing this recently. What, what is the one piece from both of you individually? What is the different one piece of advice each that you would give the next gen? Start with you, Ollie. Absolutely do it. Um, Without a doubt, it's hugely rewarding. Um, but make sure you know what, why you're doing it, and it's not just to make money, because um, then that's the, the the biggest the biggest pitfall. Know about what you want to achieve, what your strategy is, what your vision is, and have and have a um, have a, re a a real reason f for setting it up. That'd probably be, be my advice. So uh, for me, it would be about timing. You know, I think timing is everything. Um, and I think like if I were to, maybe I probably thought I could set up a business when I was 25, right? I'm 32 now. There's no way I could have done it, like not knowing what I know now. So I think it's, it's knowing when the timing is right. And, and sometimes it will feel right. Like you'll, you'll just know your instincts will tell you that now is the time to set up and go for it. And, and you got to trust your instincts in that respect. But also, you know, be patient enough to know when you have to learn, when you have to take your time to sort of develop and mature because running a business, again, it's no joke, right? So you're, you're the person liable for everything, right? It's your name um, on, on everything. So you got to make sure that I think you have the maturity, the responsibility, the tenacity, all the kind of elements that come into it to do it. So just be aware of that timing. And then when, it, when the time does come, just go for it. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I completely agree with that. I, I probably could have, I reckon two years of waiting to do it where I could have done it and financially yeah. it was okay, but something inside of me wasn't ready. Something wasn't yeah. sure enough. Like I was still enjoying learning from other people and, you know, being, being on the payroll. Like I, I kind of, you, you feel there's a point where you know, that's no longer you. Right. I don't know, yeah, what, yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, I remember having a conversation once leaving it and ringing Amma and going, 
the sooner the better. Like, let's just get this get this ready now. And it was just it wasn't anything negative about the company. It was just I think what it was was they were having a chat about their future, and I was thinking about mine, and it weren't they're just not in the same direction. And I think I always see that when you early days in a recruitment business, you usually your your plans and their plans are aligned, and at some point, don't know why, when, how, but they, they once they start to drift, that's mm-hmm. when you're like, you know, my direction is different. Um, I, I, I guess final question then, do you think now is a good time? Could, would you recommend someone who's got the cash potentially to sit there for the next six months and just build? Would you, would you say do it or would you say wait out and, you know, launch when the markets recover? It depends on your market and it it, it depends on the market you'd be going into and it would depend on the amount of cash that you've got um, and whether you you would have a a, a tough restrictive covenant. But I think um, there's been some amazing companies that have uh, been set up in uh, financial crashes before. And um, I think especially now, actually, there's loads of people on furlough that aren't contacting clients and candidates. So maybe it isn't as... Um, fiercely competitive as you'd imagine so I think yeah, if you've got the right market the right strategy a little bit of a financial runway absolutely the right time go for it well now you, you've heard it there first Ollie and Sam say go away and do it if you're listening do um, you agree Sam? I, yeah I do actually I think I, just, I said this, exactly I, I what think, I was saying I think if you exactly what you said if you've got the runway there's the, the playing field has been leveled somewhat. Like there's a lot, yeah, of, a lot of big businesses that are on, on the back foot they're all scrambling they're working out other operational things they're not maybe as hungry or as you know as aggressive as they were and they haven't got the manpower they had so i think look it's, it's definitely a good time if you've got those things if you yeah if, if you haven't planned a business and you're just winging it then nah. um guys thank you so much for taking the time out um i uh, i'm excited to see obviously we're working with you anyway but i'm excited to see you guys grow um, i'll definitely get you back on in the future and see where when these first second third hires come in how how is it all going um hopefully ollie's won a game of tennis by then as well we'll uh, talk about that <laughs> i'll have a lot more gray hair I'll tell you that much for the time i win a tennis match <laughs> I think, i'm just hoping i don't go bald i'm, I'm happy with the gray as long as it goes uh, but gents thank you so much and guys thanks for listening hope you enjoyed it um i always say if you enjoy listening to the show i don't ask for any money i do ask you for you to do one thing which is share the show so get it out via whatsapp text email whatever method you use to the people you know that uh, that would, would benefit from this especially if you know someone who like these guys is interested in starting an agency they, they did it 12 months ago and there's a real fresh story there um i'll be back again tomorrow with more news insights stories from the, the current global market In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon.